today we will discuss about the fourth ventricle uh, now here you can see this stent shaped cavity is the fourth ventricle and it is also known as, a, known as rhomboidal fossa and it is a cavity of hindbrain as you know that hindbrain consists of three parts these are the pons medulla oblongata and cerebellum uh, now actually this stent shaped cavity lies in front of cerebellum or anterior to the cerebellum and posterior to this pons and uh, medulla oblongata now here you can see this one is the posterior surface of the pons and medulla oblongata and this posterior surface makes the floor of the ventricle or anterior wall of the ventricle while uh, here you can see this one is the roof of the ventricle and this roof makes the posterior wall or, uh, or roof of the ventricle then this ventricle it lined by the it is lined by the ependyma and upward it becomes continuous with the cerebral aqueduct and below it becomes continuous with the uh, central canal then after that we will discuss brief introduction of all the ventricles so that you can understand the flow of uh, csf uh, now here you can see these are the two cerebral hemispheres now cavity of the cerebral hemisphere are the right and left lateral ventricles uh, here you can see third ventricle it is a cavity of diencephalon and this is the fourth ventricle cavity of hindbrain now CSF from right and left lateral ventricles, it comes into the third ventricle through these interventricular foramina. Then from this third ventricle, CSF goes into the fourth ventricle through this cerebral aqueduct. And after that, in the fourth ventricle, you can see three apertures. This median aperture is known as foramen of Vijandi, while there are two recesses, lateral recesses, and these are the foramina of Lushka. So through these three apertures, CSF from fourth ventricle, it goes into the subarachnoid space. So it was a brief introduction. After that, we will discuss about the boundaries of the ventricle. Now, uh, fourth ventricle has three boundaries, lateral boundaries, floor and roof. Uh, now in, in this figure, uh, first of all, we will see the lateral boundaries. Now lateral boundaries, we divide it to, into two parts, supralateral part and infralateral part. Now supralaterally on each side here and here this ventricle is bounded by superior cerebellar peduncle while infralaterally on each side it is bounded by inferior cerebellar peduncle supplemented by cuneate tubercle and gracile tubercle. Then after that we will discuss about the floor. Now here you can see this one is the floor of the ventricle and it is diamond shape in its upper part it is formed by the posterior surface of the pons while in its lower part it is formed by the posterior surface of upper part of the medulla now features of the floor are in midline there is a sulcus this sulcus is known as median sulcus then lateral to this median sulcus there are two elongated elevations and these elevations are known as medial eminence then lateral to the medial eminence there is another sulcus here and here and this is known as sulcus limitans. Then lateral to the sulcus limitans, this area is known as vestibular area and it is produced due to underlying vestibular nuclei. Then in upper part or superiorly, just lateral to the sulcus limitans, this area is known as substantia ferruginea and it is produced due to underlying uh, deeply pigmented cells and uh, th which have melanin in their cytoplasm and it is a part of our reticular formation that is concerned with our paradoxical sleep uh, which is rapid eye movement sleep then uh, this was the medial eminence now below the medial eminence on each side here this one and this one these are the facial colliculus now facial colliculus are very important okay, how these were produced now in this figure you can see that this is the transfer section of the pons at the level of facial colliculus. Now this one is the facial nerve nucleus and this one is the abducer nerve nucleus. Now when fibers emerge from the facial nerve nucleus they go backward and then they wind around the abducer nerve nucleus. Due to this winding there is production of surface elevation and this surface elevation in the floor of fourth ventricle is known as facial colliculus. So in this way facial colliculus is produced here. 
then in lower part here you can see these fibers and they fibers emerge from this medial uh, from this median sulcus and uh, these fibers are known as uh, stria medullaris uh, now remember that uh, we discuss uh, transfer section of medulla at olives uh, see in this figure this is the transfer section of medulla at olives and here these are the two arcuate nuclei now fibers that arise from these arcuate nuclei which go backward and they come out from this fourth ventricle from the median sulcus and then they goes laterally these are known as stria medullaris and laterally then they goes to the inferior cerebellar peduncle and then through this peduncle they enter into the cerebellum then after that um, here you can see again these are the stria medullaris now due to these stria medullaris this area is further divided into upper and lower part upper part we are already discussed then in the lower part here you can see in lower part below these stria medullaris uh, there is a triangle upper triangle or medial side triangle that is hypoglossal triangle that is produced due to underlying hypoglossal nuclei then below there is vagal triangle that is produced uh, due to uh, dorsal motor vagus uh, uh, motor nucleus of vagus nerve um, then uh, this one is the lateral margin of the uh, of the ventricle and between the vagal triangle and between the uh, this lateral margin this area is known as area postrema now this area postrema is uh, act as a chemoreceptor while this vagal triangle has the vital centers uh, centers of our respiration and uh, cardiac center then after that okay, here you can see roof uh, now, uh, roof is divided into two parts. Now, in upper part, it is formed by medial borders of through superior cerebellar peduncles, and between them, a connecting sheet of white matter that is known as superior medullary vellum. While in lower part, here you can see this is formed by the inferior medullary vellum. And then in the lower part of inferior medullary vellum, here you can see median aperture, and this aperture is known as foramina of Majundi. Then, after that, you can see. Uh, again this is a tent shaped cavity and uh, this hole is the roof of the ventricle now roof um, has the upper part now upper part it is in uh, it is formed by the superior medullary vellum while in the lower part it is formed by inferior medullary vellum uh, now understanding is very important how inferior medullary vellum is formed because actually inferior medullary vellum is divided of nervous tissue and it is formed by ventricular ependyma and pia mater now in this figure see that this red one is hole the ependyma while this one is the pia mater that comes from here to this fourth ventricle now together this ependyma and this pia mater they make the inferior medullary vellum here you can see superior medullary vellum this one is the inferior medullary vellum then in the lower part of inferior medullary vellum here you can see this is the foramina and it is foramina of majundi and then after that again you can see these are the right and left superior cerebellar peduncles and between them a connecting sheet of white matter superior medullary vellum while uh, in the lower part here you can see inferior medullary vellum that is divided of nervous tissue and formed by ependyma and pia mater now uh, in this figure you can see this is the foramina of majundi and opening of this foramina of majundi into cerebellum medullary cistern here and this cerebellum medullary cistern lies below the cerebellum and posterior to the medulla oblongata and these are the lateral apertures of foramina of lushka through these uh, csf goes into or it communicate with the cisterna pontis so at the end csf goes into the subarachnoid space through these cisterns then after that uh, choroid plexus now here you can see uh, choroid plexus of the fourth ventricle is t-shape now uh, this is the vertical part of the t-shape and in the lower part of vertical part there is foramina that is foramina of majundi while this one is the transverse part now on the lateral end of the transverse part there are the foramina that are the foramina of lushka actually this t-shape is uh, choroid plexus is formed by the tila choroidea now what is tila choroidea tila choroidea is the double layer of pia mater that is lined by ependyma when capillaries enter into the tila choroidea they make the choroid plexus uh, now remember that these capillaries or branches are actually are coming from the posterior inferior cerebellar artery
then after that um, again you can see uh, here you can see choroid plexus in the roof upper part of the roof and uh, in the lower part uh, here you can see in this figure um, there are three apertures in the mid one, mid line there is median aperture while on each side these two are the lateral apertures uh, so it was all about the fourth ventricle